Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can remove duplicate objects from an array of objects. And I'll be showing you two ways of doing that, a json.stringify method and doing it by an identifier. So both of these methods have strengths and weaknesses and you'll want to weigh these out when deciding which one to use in a given situation. So let's start with the stringify method. To begin, you apply the filter method to the array. So what you do with filter is pass a function into it and this function is going to run as many times as there are items in the array and each time the function runs you have available to you the current value so each object and also the current index value of the current item. So the way that filter works is that it produces a new array so I'll save a reference here to the new array it produces and that new array is going to contain items for which the return value of this function is true. So what we're going to want to do inside here is set a rule which is true when the current item is unique and false when the current item is a duplicate. So to do that I'm going to make the return value of this function the result of a logical comparison between the current index value that filter is iterating through. So it's going to be initially 0, 1, 2, and then 3. And on the right hand side, the index value of the first appearance of an object in the array. So for example, for this first object in the array, when filter is iterating over it, the current index value is going to be 0. And on the right hand side, the first appearance of this object in the array is also going to be zero so this is going to return true and this first object is going to be kept and it's going to be placed in the new array by filter but when filter reaches the duplicate of that object at index position two in the array then the value of index is going to be two but the index position of the first appearance of that object it's still going to be zero. So this is going to end up returning false and the duplicate will not be included in the new array. And this is the way that we're going to be filtering out duplicate objects from the array because if it's not the first appearance of an object, index is always going to be greater than the right hand side, which is the index value of its first appearance. Now how to return the index value of an object's first appearance. So for this, you can use a method called findIndex and this accepts a function and it's going to iterate through the array, so the original array and the first time that this function returns true it's going to stop iterating through the array and return the current index value. So we want to set a rule inside this function that is going to return true when findIndex comes across the first instance of an object in the array. So I'm going to make the return value of this function the outcome of a logical comparison and it's going to be between the item that filter is currently iterating over and the first time that findIndex finds that particular item because item it could be the first, second, third instance of an object but findIndex is going to return true the first time it finds it. So in that way we can find the first appearance of an object in the array. Now you can't make a logical comparison between objects directly but what you can do is stringify those objects in order that you can compare them as string values. So that's what I'm going to do here. So firstly I want to stringify item which is the item that filter is currently iterating over and compare that to a stringified version of the current object that find index is iterating over. So the current object is available to you as a parameter automatically in the function that you've nested inside find index. So this should now hopefully be working and filter will return an array with only two objects into the res reference. So let's take a look at that result now in the console. So we're getting back an array of two items, the first and the second object in the array. 
So this works because we're comparing stringified versions of the objects, but there is a major weakness to that, and that is because we're using json.stringify, which silently removes functions from objects. When you use it, the functions here are being silently removed in the comparison and not compared properly. So if I was to change this function in the duplicate here in some way, so it's no longer a duplicate, it would still be filtered out of the array because json.stringify won't take functions into account. It will silently remove them and just compare the data values. So if we take a look at the output, you see that we still only have two objects in the array, even though we should have three. You might find it odd here that the function is still included on the object at index position one, but that is because json.stringify is only removing these functions in the comparison. What's being stored by filter in the new array is a subset of the existing items in the array. So you still get the function in it, but it's not actually comparing the functions. So this is a downside to using JSON stringify. Having said that, if you don't have any functions in your object, then it's a good solution. It's actually comparing all of the keys and values together without you having to specify each one individually. The next method I'm about to show you, comparing by identifier, does require you to explicitly specify the keys you want to compare on. The upside is you can also use it for comparing functions. Now, the logic of the comparison is actually very similar to the JSON stringify method. So I'm going to copy it and edit it. And I'll comment out the json.stringify original code we were just working with. So the change we make to the JSON stringify method here is instead of comparing stringified versions of each object, we're going to be comparing individual keys on the objects. So the one that you will compare most often as an identifier on an object is usually an ID property. So with this code, we're comparing the ID values only here. So it's ignoring the other parts of the object. But if the ID identifier is representative of the rest of the content on the object, then this is a good solution. Now, before moving on to multiple properties and functions, I'm going to speed test this identifier approach against the JSON stringify method, because in most use cases, comparing a stringified version of the object or by an ID value is going to be sufficient. So you may be wondering which one to use and something that might help you in deciding between them is which one is more performant or in other words, which one is faster. So I'm going to copy these into JS Bench. So this allows you to set up rival test cases with some setup JS beforehand. So this is code that is common to both of the solutions. So that's the array. And if you want, you can set up more test cases to compare here by adding another test case. But here, I'm just gonna go ahead and test these two solutions against each other. Now, my suspicion is because the stringify method involves stringifying the objects that it's going to be slightly slower. So that is the case. It's about 40% slower than filtering by identifier. Now, actually, this isn't a huge difference if you're just doing this once for a small array it's not going to make much difference. If you're iterating over a large number of objects in an array, then this might start mattering to you, in which case you're better off with the filter by identifier solution. Now let's return to the code and I'll show you how you can compare across multiple identifiers and also take the value of functions into account. Now, if you want to compare objects on another data property, such as name in addition to ID, then all you need to do is to extend the logical comparison. So you're now checking for the first appearance of ID as well as name. So all you need to do is to check on that name property as well. And that's now checking 
on both of those properties. So if I was to change the third object name in this array to someone two, then the first object is unique. The second one is also unique. The third one, now it's someone two for name, is also unique. The fourth one is also unique, but we're not taking functions into account yet. So even though they're all unique, the fourth object in this array is only unique on the functions. So because we're not comparing for that, we're still only going to get back three objects in the array. So to compare functions as well, we again want to extend this logical comparison. I'll go on to a new line here. So to make this a single statement with a return value, I'm going to be using the ternary operator here. So the condition that will be true or false is whether the function property exists on an object. It only exists on two of the objects, so it would throw an error if it doesn't exist and we tried to compare on that property. So the first thing I want to do is to check if the function exists on the objects being compared. If that is true, then I want to go ahead and compare the values of those functions. Right, so you can't compare functions directly, but you can compare them by stringifying them. You can't use JSON stringify, of course, because that silently removes functions. But there is another method you can use for this, and that is the toString method. So you want to compare the stringified version of each of these functions. So for this statement now, it's going to return true if these functions exist and they both have the same value. Now with the ternary operator, we have to specify what this will return if this initial statement is false. So if the functions don't exist and we actually want to return true here. The reason that we want to return true here is if the property containing the function does not exist on both of the objects, then they are identical in that sense. So when the find index function is iterating through the array, trying to find the first instance of an object, if it doesn't have a function on it, then it's going to return true here. And if it returns true also on name and also on ID, then that is going to be counted as the first instance of the object. If it does have a function, then it's going to return true only if those two functions are equivalent. So let's take a look at the result in the console now. All objects in the array are now unique. So we get an array back with four objects. Just to check that function check is working. I'll change it back now so it's the same as the first object with a function. You see now it's not included in the array. So that is how you can filter duplicate objects from an array of objects in JavaScript. And that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.